Chances are you already know what a load balancer is, how an API gateway works, and what a reverse proxy is, but you're probably struggling with putting them all in one big picture, meaning understanding how they would actually interact with each other within one architecture. But don't worry, this is exactly what we're gonna learn in this video, and we're also gonna take a look at them one by one separately to learn these subtle differences between them, because they're very important. So if you're interested in this kind of contact, I am asking you to smash the like button below and subscribe so that you know you're not gonna miss this kind of videos in the future. And with that said, let's get started. All right, friends. So for this diagram, the one where, that we're gonna start with, I want you to imagine an application that gets around 500 requests per hour. So it's not like super famous application, but it's also not unknown. So what's gonna happen here is we have different services responsible for different things within our application. So let's say these are for orders, this one is for payment and so on. And the requests that are coming into our system, and VPC stands for a virtual private cluster, by the way, the request that is coming into our cluster is first going to be greeted by a load balancer. So the load balancer is going to be our first entry point. And then the load balancer is going to simply balance this load between different API gateways. And then the API gateways are going to reroute this request into one of our instances. Okay, this is fine, but there's another type of an architecture where an API gateway can be the entry point for our VPC. Now the question is, which one is right? This one or this one, or maybe the ones that I have even further down? The answer is the possibilities here are actually endless. You can have an endless number of combinations depending on your first requirements and the design or the way you, that you want to design your system. Maybe to better understand this, I would like to go over these three different types that I have put here. So the first one that I want to talk with you about is something called reverse proxy or ingress proxy. I already have a dedicated video about a reverse proxy, so go check it out. And I'm gonna leave all the links in the description so that if you have some time for a rabbit hole and you wanna learn more or dig deeper, you can do that. But the a reverse proxy is basically something like Nginx that sits in front of your instances here. So it's always going to sit in front of your instances and it actually can do more than you expect. First, it can do rate limiting. Second, it can do authentication. It can also do a IP filtering, caching, SSL handling, and even load balancing. Imagine that. That's why I put load balancer as a subset of a reverse proxy. So as you can see, reverse proxies are quite smart. Now, we also have an API gateway and an API gateway can do all the same things that a reverse proxy can do. For example, an API gateway like a Spring Cloud gateway, but it can also do a service discovery, meaning the serve instances can actually register themselves within an API gateway and tell them, hey, if your user wants the order service or the, the request needs to go to the order service, here's my API so you can reach me under this API and I am the order service. So the API gateway is going to know about. I also have a video about service discovery, so go check it out. And it also can do circuit breaking. Also have a video on that. So as you can see, reverse proxies are literally the same thing as an API gateway. So I'm putting an equal sign, but an API gateway is more sophisticated, first of all. And second of all, if a reverse proxy is simply sitting in front of the instance, and in case of an Nginx, like this is more suitable for serving static content, like Nginx is best at it. An API gateway is more something that deals with API endpoints. That's why it's called an API gateway. So it's it's, it's best at, at handling or rewriting requests to different API endpoints, all right? And now, last but not least, we also have an ingress control. Now, ingress control, as I said here, is a reverse proxy, but in the world of Kubernetes. So if you don't know anything about it, don't worry, this is still quite understandable for you. But literally within the Kubernetes world, this is called differently. It's called an ingress controller, which is going to reroute the request to something like a service that can also do load balancing and service discovery at the same time. Now, since we talked about rate limiting, authentication, caching, and so on, I want to give a shout out to my friends at Lunar Dev. Lunar Dev is an API consumption management platform crafted to monitor, manage, and optimize your third-party API usage at scale. Unlike tools that monitor ingress API traffic, Lunar Dev is the first fully dedicated to your egress traffic. Egress meaning APIs that you are consuming. No code changes needed. Lunar Dev handles rate limiting, load balancing, and throttling for any provider 
and across multiple environments seamlessly. Now let's explore Lunar Dev in action in their interactive sandbox. So here in this dashboard, we're looking at how Lunar Dev works and also the magic of this very basic policies YAML that can literally change your life and your application. This little file is your key to mastering the Lunar Proxy. For this example, imagine having different environments sharing the same API key. And also, we want to change the quotas for each environment. We want to allocate 80% of the traffic to production and just 20% of the traffic to staging. That's very easy with Lunar. Just toggle the enabled field to true in this policies.yaml, punch in a simple command in the terminal to apply the changes, and boom, Lunar Dev works its charm. Say goodbye to rate limiting issues and enjoy the 200s OK responses. And the best part is, we didn't have to mess with your code at all. Lunar Dev makes it super easy to control your API consumption. Alright, that's just a start with Lunar Dev. Now, if you're into slick visualizations, they've got something special cooking in beta a new UI offering. Launch date is around the corner, so head over to their website for all the scoop on the big reveal. And with that said, back to our blackboard. And let's go further and look at something even more common that you would see in the real world. So here we have a Kubernetes cluster and the client makes a request to this Kubernetes cluster. And here we see this exact ingress controller that I already mentioned that works as an entry point into our cluster. Then the ingress controller is going to act as an API gateway. It's going to decide, okay, if the user wants to access the orders API or endpoint, I'm gonna reroute the request here. If the user needs payment, I'm going to reroute it here. And then the service can act as a load balancer because it's already aware of the, all the pods and their IP addresses. And it can also do load balancing at the same time. So it's going to balance all the load between all these three pods. And now let's talk about the final boss, aka something that a very, very popular application that gets around thousands requests within one minute would look like. All right, so it's under high pressure, so we need more components here. But let's also take a look at how this would look like. So a client request goes to a reverse proxy, first of all. This reverse proxy decides which cluster to reroute the request to, because here we have two clusters. And of course, you can decide to create two clusters or maybe live with one cluster. Use cases for two different clusters would be, for example, if your application lives in two different uh, countries in for two different tenants, maybe, or maybe for two different environments. Let's say this one is production, this one's for staging, whatever. So let's say we decide to go to this cluster. So the ingress controller again is going to act as an API gateway. It's going to reroute this to this service. The service, don't forget, works as a load balancer. But here we only have one API gateway sitting in front. And we're going to not load balance, but actually simply move this request to an API gateway. The API gateway can do all the rate limiting, all the caching and so on, all the authentication. And then maybe if our API gateway is sophisticated enough, for example, if it already has the capabilities of load balancing, because as we saw above here, let me go above, as we saw here, API gateways also can do load balancing because they have these capabilities. They can also do that. And then they're going to do load balancing between our two pods. Now, if you guys think I missed anything, or if you have already tried one of these architectures, let me know in the comments below. If you gained value from this video, course, again, leave a comment. And if you have anything to add, please do that. I think it will be beneficial not only for me, but also for all the other viewers. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.